this will be the last time that I ever have to, you know, rush to get it out before the next episode. Because after next episode, that's F8. That's end of the season. Finale is coming up next week. Oh, so you'd think, except it says right here on YouTube, 12 episodes. You son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah, more art, baby! <laughs> Multiple places I looked, uh, it's 12 episodes. Oh, holy And they, 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 they got a contract for 12 episodes. Much like the actual plot of the show, you thought it was going to be small and contained and kind of lame. But no, it's way bigger than you thought. All right. So, wow. I'm glad there's more apps. I'm going to check on IMDb. See, okay, okay. I think last time I looked at IMDb and I clicked on episodes, it said eight, but I think it only, now it says nine. I think maybe it just updates. So, okay. Per week, it does do it per week. Ep eight next week, and then a week after that will be ep nine. And then that's where IMDb ends. But it ended at eight, you know, like a week or two ago. Yeah. So there's that. I think it's just updating slowly. Oh, but it does say a 12-episode order from Sci-Fi. Uh, yeah, I read that. My first question for Rob is, did you feel slightly foolish after asserting quite vociferously that it was Arc 5 due to your screen-pausing skills on our last recording? And it turned out to be Arc 3. Okay, yeah, I felt like a dumbass for that. That tells me one very important thing. Rob needs new glasses. Yeah, I mean, it looked like a blur to me until I actually had it on my laptop and I was doing the edit and zoomed in. You know, when I saw it on the TV, I had no idea what the hell it said. I didn't even see a five. So whatever. I made a prediction. They didn't really say definitively, but I assumed that there was some kind of like fork put in the garbage disposal and that caused a shipwide lockdown and that killed everybody. <laughs> When they went on the ship, they were going to find everybody like half in and out of doors, crushed it up. <laughs> the best scene of the whole episode was when a uh, douchebag. Spencer Lane, use their names, man. They've earned that. Spencer Lane. He sounds like he should be a race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a that's a fucking American name right there. <laughs> when everything started locking down and he leapt through the doors because he knew exactly what was going to happen. Yeah, he's he's been through quite a few. <laughs> this know. episode was two lockdowns they had, three. I guess you can count the individual ones that the little saboteur lady was causing as well. Well, actually, Andrew, the best scene of the episode is when Eva said, I'd like to take a look at her nips. I want to see their nips. Uh, <laughs> nope. When her and Bryce were doing their hallway wall conversation and there was like a discernible jiggle going on throughout the entire thing, that was good. That was my favorite scene. I did notice a lot of that going on as well. Something else I've noticed too, we, it's too late to do as like a feature, but if we went back to F1 and started watching, this is a very arm grabby show where you're having a conversation and they're walking away and you reach out and just snatch their arm and turn them around and then make your point. Like that's, that's like a, that's like assault. Quit, quit doing that. Don't, don't grab me. And yet they do like this episode, I think had two or three arm grabs. Previous ones I've noticed two or three. Damn it. I've never noticed the arm grabs. Now I'm going to see nothing but. That can go on the list for the drinking game companion thing you put together. Yeah. Every time you see a hallway arm grab. Every time you see a lockdown, take a shot. Yeah, We'd be fucked up by that point. My prediction early in the episode when they shuttle over and the door opens up and they're all wearing their spacesuits and I'm looking at them and I'm like, one, two, three, four, five. And I recognize all of them. They smartly, wisely did not bring a single red shirt with them. No, they brought one. My argument is he is not a red shirt. He's pinkish. Because <laughs> he survived? No, he has a name, and he has been in previous episodes, and he's Eva's direct subordinate. He's like yes. the XO for engineering. Yeah. So he is not a red shirt. He's pink. Okay, okay, okay. He's sort of like season two Chief O'Brien. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then he's he's sipping on the captain's bourbon, and you're like, oh, God, that's like as bad as having sex in a killer movie. You, you oh, can't. Yeah, yeah. That was death sentence right there. Oh, yeah. I, I, I the figured he infected poison. himself with something when he did that. <laughs> I know. And then when it was a bio lockdown, you're like, oh, my God, he just drank the green crystal. If I die horribly in space, I will actually stand myself up in a closet and lean against the door and then die. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's. That's how I want to go out. I want to be able to surprise whoever finds my body by lurching forward onto them. He was like the life of the ship. He was the Joker. So, you know, he knows he's dying. He's like, you know what would be awesome? That's like uh, the butler and Clue. Bye, 
find them. <laughs> I promised Rob if he dies before me, I will do that with his body. So when they come to get him. Maybe he did that. He had like a bro agreement. After he died, some dude, he was sick and dying, but he crawled into the room and deleted all his porn and then propped him up in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> So Yelena happens to find a samurai sword. So first thought is, oh shit, hot chick with a samurai sword. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it turns out she gives it to Felix. And his best episode becomes even better because he becomes the freaking samurai cop. Have you been circumcised? He would need so much more hair to be samurai cop. (laughs) Well, no, as you can clearly see in several scenes in Samurai Cop, his wig gets pulled off during fights. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> and not only that, he threw all the other guns out the airlock just to ensure that he is the ultimate force. He threw all but one out the airlock. Well, that's true, yes. He thought he threw all the guns out the airlock. Felix is checking the bodies. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And he turns one over. And, and it's a butler. Holy shit. It's a oh butler. My God. We, yeah, we were. That was such a big surprise. It's Robert. Oh my God! Did anybody see that coming? The only thing that would have been more surprising is if it was actually Mr. Belvedere, but it was <laughs> instead the other butler. Um, no, did not see it coming. Big surprise. That was such a great moment, though. That's why I love this show. You know, it's so cheap and so poorly put together, and then they have moments like that where you're like, "Oh my God! This show is so much better than it is." I really loved Felix's acting. He was so in character because most people, most characters in most movies are going to find when that sort of thing happens, they freak out. Felix is too cool to freak out. He was really upset, but he's Felix. And he's got a job to do and he kept his shit together. And you could see how upset he was, but you could also see his effort holding it together. And man, I was so impressed by the actor. So it's still your favorite character? Yeah, he really knows how Felix would be. And Strickland is scanning body, 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 and they're getting ID, ID, ID. And then he rolls over Robert, husband, and they scan, he, his scan comes up right away. So they're able to instantaneously scan people, right? For some reason, they never scanned Redhead. Hmm. Her information was never verified other than her word. For some odd reason, they never scanned her. Interesting. Because I wonder what that scan would turn up. Interesting, Yeah. Was or was not your thought initially, there's one survivor on the ship and it's a female, that must be Strickland's daughter. Oh, I didn't think that at all. That did cross my mind for a minute, but then later events, I was like, nah, maybe not. Okay. I did have the thought during her whole time in the show, you know, she was in the show for like probably half an hour doing her thing, spinning her tails, acting a little weird and nefarious at times. Yeah, she's a little off. So theory one is that Strickland's daughter. Possibly, possibly not. So what about Robert's, the the butler's presence on that ship? That means that either one, his daughter was also on the ship in the form of a little girl or many, many more years had passed and she was an adult. One of those two, or she actually did die and Red heard about it at their... Or option four, the butler did it. Run down the hall! No, uh, that's so. Uh, I think she's going to show up as an adult. No, I, I, I think the daughter's alive and there, she's going to be like the commander at Proxima or something and come on the screen and she's going to be an adult. All right. So you do support the theory that they were asleep for a lot longer than. I think it's entirely plausible. That would be a great turn of things if they did that. Yes. That's where I think they're going. The mundane answer, easily explainable, is we just believe everything that Red said. But Red is obviously making shit up and lying and hiding shit. Yeah, we, we've seen too much of this show. We don't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they kill husband Butler, and they're just going to off screen. Oh, by the way, your daughter died also. That's why he's here. That seems like they're throwing away a really cool plot line. So they have to have the daughter show up on the show at some point. Yeah, that virtually guarantees it, that line. When we see her again, she's either going to be a little girl or an adult. She might be an android. No, <laughs> but possibly a clone. Ah. Uh, oh, it's a clone. Oh, no, it's a clone. My theory on weird redhead girl, and this jumps a little towards the end of the episode, when she hides the gun, that tells me a couple of things. She doesn't totally trust the Ark's crew. And given what happens at the very end of the episode... 
maybe there's some kind of thing going on. She doesn't think Arc 1 is on the up and up. She thinks maybe it's part of some faction. Maybe there's two factions, each with their own arcs, that are kind of at war with each other or something. And she thinks maybe this is some elaborate ploy to get her to spill some secret. My idea along the same lines is there are the two factions. One wants to kill the founder and his dream, and she's on that faction. One of two things has happened here. One, the timeline is exactly as Red had said. They did invent or develop FTL, and they flew ahead of the Ark. And then in the vastness of space, the Ark comes upon them within a day or two of all this shit blowing up and all this shit going down. That right there is a mathematical impossibility. Or, and this gets into what I think is actually going on, Going back to, uh, I forgot if it was you, Rob, or you, Andrew, who said they slept a hell of a lot longer than they think they did. That's where I think we are. And if that's the case, then we're talking about years and or decades. And if you take like a span of like 10 years and you have an incident happen in the course of like two or three days, they got attacked, it got disabled. The engineers, like nine of them survived. Some of them started trying to kill them. That all had to have happened within a day or two. And the arc happens upon them right then. Impossible. Mathematically impossible. Unless it's not a coincidence. You're taking her story at face value. All I'm saying is the fact that he died of his internal injuries means that at some point in the last 24 hours, there was a somebody beating on him. Because if it was going to kill him from internal injuries, it's not like it happened four or five days ago or a week ago or a month ago. Here's a scenario. Perhaps it is known that trust is on arc one. Perhaps both factions want to get a hold of trust. They know approximately where the Ark is, so that's why all this shit is happening in front of the Ark. Hell, maybe they threw a comet at him. Uh, <laughs> more suspicious shit by Red is as soon as they're standing on the bridge and Garnett mentions, you know, Angus, go get the external video. And she instantly is like taken aback and is like, oh, no, we tried that. It didn't work. Oh, yeah. Yep. She didn't want them to see it. So she knows damn well that Arc 15 attacked them. And for some reason, she needs to keep it quiet from Arc 1. So she... Uh, zzz, uh. That was crazy when they finally put the video together and you just see freaking Arc 15 come flying in. Oh my God. Who expected that? The Arc's coming and shooting at them and that alone is shocking. But then it could have been arc four it could have been arc five it could have been right. arc six it's arc 15. arc 15. lane save the day if i going to wake up trust oh god yeah what a surprising end that was Thank you. i know first of all lane comes up like the big hero saves He's everybody got a lot to explain now there's like a two minute countdown and you think some rational garnet orders would be like reverse immediately full thrust turn around get us away from the impending nuclear explosion but she doesn't do that she just no uh, no they just sit there and watch rob was correct again that trust would have every single code and every single back door good thing they established from the first episode which we harped on that they have instant reviving <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. suddenly have all your faculties you're not nauseous at all you're not at all we i mean he, he obviously had instant recall of all his deep memories i'm not that together if you get me up from a nap <laughs> i know i know good on lane that plan worked he would have felt like an asshole if he woke him up for no reason. But just before that happened, when it was getting down to a few seconds left, but then just for a minute, Breva almost happened. Wait, what? What are we talking about? Bryce and Eva. That's their couple name. <laughs> oh. I was cheering for it, man. Breva almost happened. The lips almost touched. And then boom, cock blocked by getting the day saved. Breva does float. That sounds very much like a coupling, uh, Thing that I have dubbed it Breva. I dare you to challenge me with something better. I can't remember his first name or her last name, so I'm kind of like... James, and I don't remember her last name. Jeeva! No, Jeeves! <laughs> that's too much like a... That's Felix and Robert was Jeeves. Butler. Do you think Yelena, security officer oh, Yelena, she's going to either be kind of like... Yeah, is she going to be either a little bit drunk or a little bit pissed off and angry or just coming out of a workout and all sweaty and stuff and see Angus sitting there and grab him and drag him into a bunk and like give him like the ride of his life? Because I see that happening. 
I think she's going to try something and then Yelena's face is going to fall off like a 1970s <laughs> Westworld. <laughs> so you're convinced that Yelena is still the android? I think she's an android, yeah. I think neither of you is thinking big enough here. Clearly from earlier episodes, we got a little hint that Bryce and Yelena were kind of getting it on on the side. Now, assuming Breva happens, maybe Yelena catches a little jealousy. Maybe we get a girl fight. Yelena versus Eva. They're oh, going down. Oh. Because oh. you think. Or maybe they're all adults and they're just all into the menage. We're going to get ripped shirts and everything, man. <laughs> Pulled hair. <laughs> There's going to be smacking. Or Bryce, they do a thing where like Bryce is like worried because they like he's kind of diddling both, and then the two girls start making out, and then they're all they're they're both okay with the menage. Well, now you need to come up with a name for all three of them. It needs to be Yareva. Yabriva. There it is, right there. That sounds like a female contraceptive. <laughs> <laughs> or it sounds like a new kind of a uh, mineral water. <laughs> Okay, ready? Here, here's my contribution to the whole uh, celebrity hookup name generator thing. Yangus. <laughs> Jelena and my scenario with her deflowering Angus. <laughs> Yangus. Alicia and Angus. How do those two go together? Alangus? Alangus sounds ugly. Alicious? I like Alicious. Oh, Alicious, however. Alicious sounds delicious. Alicious, I'm liking. That's that's much better than Alangus. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's here's the other one Shalane because <laughs> they've been getting along the last two episodes yeah that's true Organizing. she can't go lower than lieutenant because that would be inappropriate right well no any of the t other two lieutenants since she's the commander are militarily off limits so you're saying that only a civilian would do so she'd have to Get with like the doctor or the or the blonde cat, girl or cat yeah. mm. cat mm. and we can call her chat because <laughs> <laughs> ah. they were sparking off each other this episode right with the whole get off the bridge get off the couch kind of thing uh -huh, they, they, uh -huh. were yep, they were sparking they were sparking chat is a thing and we'll be talking to like sci-fi fans about chat and they'll think we're talking about Shatner but no <laughs> we're talking about 